What is so good to be with you? Crossbridge, the weather is finally turning. Not bad for like the first of February, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is awesome. Well, hey, if you're visiting with us today, I'm so glad that, that you've joined us. My name's Harold. Um, if you ever have a hard time remembering my name, just think like 80-year-old man, right? That's, that's kind of my name. I've embraced it after all these years, but I serve as the lead pastor here at Crossbridge, and, and we've been kind of journeying this really, this really unique series called The Unlikely. And so if you're visiting with us today, I just want to take a couple moments and, and hopefully can get you kind of up to speed. A couple weeks ago, we started with the idea of the unlikely things that go on in our life, uh, situational things, things that are out of our control, the, the things that maybe loom over us. And when we think about tackling them and when we think about approaching them, it's just overwhelming because it, it's too big, it's too, it's too grand that, that, that somebody as simple as me or somebody as simple as you can actually overcome what this is. It's unlikely. But we talked about God likes to show up in the unlikely, right? This whole idea of we think about things so sometimes in a negative light because we make up the, let me see, we make up the resolution before we even get started, right? And so we we immediately choose to lose before we even give God an opportunity to show up and win, you know, one of, the, one of the lines that came out of that first week is, when we lean into the unlikely, we get to show our God is unlike any other. And so then I challenge you. I challenge you to email me about some of the unlikelies that you and your family may be facing. And I'm still getting bombarded by all of you, and I love it. I, seriously. You know what? Like, th- th- this, this role now, it, it has a lot of business. It does. It's a lot. But being able to hear from you, like, that's what I enjoy. Like, that, that's why I do this. I, and so I appreciate all the emails, and I even got back to some more of you today. And it has been so amazing to hear how you're leaning in and trusting God in the unlikely in your life. And so then the last week, week two, we, we kind of uh, took a little bit of a different perspective in the unlikely. The unlikely was you. Are you the unlikely in your story? Maybe the things in your life are going okay, they're going fine, but you don't seem to give God a chance to work in the midst of of you, right? We even brought up this idea of, man, Pastor Harold, if you only knew my past. Pastor Harold, if, if, if God truly understood all the things that I used to deal with and the things that I used to participate in, there's no way... There's no way that the God, the creator of the universe, would give me a chance. And so then I told you and I prompted you with this idea that you cannot make up God's mind for him. You don't have that power. I don't have that power. Right? The things in your past, you cannot make up God's mind. If you choose to trust in him, we learn that you become a new creation. And there's nothing that you can do that will fix that. There's nothing that you can do. All you have to simply do is ask God to be a part of your life and you get to start new. So you can't make up God's mind. And so last week we learned that no matter what your past says about you, God is the author of your future. So today, week three of the unlikely, we're gonna be coming from it from another perspective. Um, so when I was in the process of being interviewed for this new role, it, it, was, it was a process. I talked about that week one. It was weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. It was a journey. It was a journey. And, 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 and because of it was a very sensitive matter, we weren't able to talk to a lot of people about it, really hardly anybody. Uh, but I was able to talk to my dad some. And, uh, and my dad really doesn't speak up a lot. He just, he doesn't, he doesn't say a lot. Um, but my dad is kind of one of those guys that like when he does speak and when he is vulnerable enough to kind of speak into my life or my sister's life, um, there's, there's sometimes a lot of wisdom in it. You know, and, and I was talking through him about, you know, what some of my new responsibilities would be and what this role meant and all the things. And, uh, you know, it was kind of funny, but my dad was like, you know, well, with with great power comes great responsibility. And it just kind of hit me, 
right? It, it kind of hit me. And, and obviously, like, he's a fan of, of Spider-Man, apparently, right? That's okay, right? Because we, we, we all know where it comes from, right? With great power comes a great responsibility, right? And, 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 not, and not that, like, I'm on this big pedestal of power. I'm not. I'm nobody. Like, in the grand scheme of things, like, I'm absolutely nobody. But in any realm that we deal with anything, that statement is really true. With great power comes great responsibility. Like, it's almost a natural law, wouldn't you say? Like, with great power comes great responsibility. No matter what you're doing, with great power comes great responsibility. I'm going to keep saying that over and over and over because I think it's really important what we're going to learn today. But it affects us in our relationships, with great power comes great responsibility. The responsibility of, of raising children with great power comes great responsibility. With wealth comes great power, great responsibility. Where you work, the conversations you have, what you speak into and over people, it is a lot of responsibility. Because even though you may be sitting there, you may not feel like you have a lot of power. I'm telling you, you do. You are powerful people. It doesn't matter what you do, but it's how you choose to do it. How you choose to carry yourself. And the list goes on and on. But that thought can be pretty overwhelming. Well, well Pastor Harold, I, I wanted to be encouraged. This is kind of going the wrong direction here today. Right? I'm sorry. Sometimes, sometimes this is going to be really, really fun and encouraging, and sometimes we, we got to take care of some business. This is going to be one of those days. This is your warning shot, okay? But it can be pretty overwhelming. I get it. Some of you may be sitting there, some of you may be sitting there right here today, and you may not even want to carry that responsibility. Maybe you can kind of look back into your past and, 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 and maybe, maybe there have been moments and times when you've had great power comes great responsibility and maybe you made the wrong decision and you saw the implications of how your power showed itself. But some of you may not even want to carry that kind of responsibility and that's okay if you're living there. It is totally okay if you're at a place right now in your life where you are not okay with living with that kind of responsibility. But let me speak this into you, okay? Let me lean on you a little bit. If that's where you're living, it's totally okay. I don't want you to raise your hand. I'm not gonna call you out. I just wanna speak into your life for a moment. If you're living there, more than likely you are not living into your purpose. If you are at a place where you do not want to take on responsibility to understand what your true power is, you're probably at a place in your life where, where, where you are not living on purpose. So everybody can maybe relate to this. Have, have, have any of you guys ever struggled with finding your purpose? Yeah, there we go. Good. Good. We got some normal folks here. So I want you to lean in a little bit. So... Today, your purpose is not unlikely. If you're at a place where you're saying, Pastor Harold, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't want the responsibility. I don't want to be able to carry the weight of myself having power and, and being able to, to do things. I don't, I don't want to carry that. I want to tell you that your purpose is not unlikely. It will remain unlikely if you do not allow God to enter it. But you get to make that decision. Okay, you get to make that decision. Okay, so how can we lean into our unlikely purpose? Well, some of the things that we believe here at Crossbridge, we have core values. A couple of those core values are love unconditionally and choose community. So here's what I can promise you. After today, if you choose to lean into your purpose, if you choose to own it, here, here's, here's probably what's going to happen. There's going to be temptations come after today. Because as I'm talking, already of you who might be in that seat of, I don't want the responsibility, I don't want to take that on, I'm kind of struggling finding my true purpose in life, some of you are going to say as we go along today, nope, that's not me. It's not me. That, that, that is simply not my personality. I don't have the personality to do whatever it is you're about to ask me to do because I can tell Pastor Harold you're about to ask me to do something. Whew. 
right? I, I, don't, I don't know where you are. Maybe you may be saying, I don't have that skill, right? I, 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 don't, I don't have the skills necessary. There's no way that I can pull something off. But I'm going to remind you again, with great power comes great responsibility. And you have power. You have power. Now, some of you may be sitting there, well, Pastor Harold, I don't feel very powerful. You just told me that if I'm having trouble finding a purpose, that, that, that's, really not a, that's really not a great thing. And, and so some of you may be thinking, well, Pastor Harold, this, sound, this sounds good. I, I'm, I'm, you're, you're, kind of, you're kind of fueling my fire here, Pastor, but, but I'm running low. My, like my power meter is low, right? My, like my power meter is low. So where can I get more power? So essentially, your power comes from understanding your purpose, Okay. Now, now, now I know I got you just going in circles, don't I? You're like, Pastor Harold, I'm so confused, but I promise we're going to get there. Your power comes from understanding your purpose. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It'll be up, up on the screen if you don't have your uh, Bible or device with you. Romans 12, verse 1. It says, therefore... I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Well, you had me, and then you then you lost me. Well, Pastor Harold, this this verse, it's kind of a vibe killer. Like this isn't a fun verse. Like when you're going to Hobby Lobby, Romans 12, 1. Is, is not on the little fancy signs that they make at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> offer, offer your body as a living sacrifice. I know what happens to sacrifices. What, this is, I don't understand what's going enough. And, and so, but what in the world does this have to do with our purpose? I promise we're going to get there. Acts chapter 13, verse 1 and 3, it'll be up on the screen. It says, now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, Lucius of Cyrene, uh, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod, uh, the, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, now set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So last week, we learned about a gentleman by the name of Saul. Uh, he was a pretty, pretty bad guy, right? If you were here last week, he was in charge. His job was to kill Christians. And we learned about this phenomenal story of conversion in his life of when he decided to live a life for Christ. And so we have the same guy, and we have a buddy of his, Barnabas, who are literally being commissioned to go and spread the gospel. They are going charged with doing ministry. And it's pretty interesting that their ministry started with some pretty humble beginnings. Essentially, these are the first like missionaries of the whole Bible. These are the first ones. And so we're going to start at verse 3, and we're going to work our way backwards in those uh, verses 1 through 3. And so in verse three, it says, so after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So let's call this the official sending moment. So we can see from the passage, uh, easy enough, they are fasting and they are praying. Fasting is pretty neat. I don't know if you've ever done it, but fasting can be this really critical action step in our relationship with Jesus. They fasted because they sensed they would need to seek God in a special way. And so fasting can be done in in many different forms. Uh, Usually most people do it with food, but you can also do it with uh, forms of entertainment, uh, things that take a big portion of your life. If there's been something in your life and a time in your life where maybe you're wanting to hear from the Lord in a special way and you're wanting to sense his presence near you a little bit closer, you would kind of remove something that that you could kind of create space for him. That's kind of a simple definition of fasting. So they were doing that because they knew that they were going to be entering into something brand new. Barnabas and Saul, they were going to be entering something brand new, which was called ministry. And they knew that they were going to need to hear from God in a special way. Okay, the other thing that we can see in verse three is that they were simply praying, 
right? They were desperate wanting to hear from the Lord and the Lord to hear from them. It's evident that clean and clear communication is key for what is about to take place, right? How many of you husbands in here have ever had your wife send you to the grocery store without a list, right? Clear and clean communication is key, right? Because like you don't want to get to the store and, and, and then you have to call her because that means you didn't listen, right? It, it, it's kind of the same here. Like the, like, like the task is before them and they're wanting to make sure that all wave channels are completely cleaned and focused, You know, it's interesting that over the course of Jesus's ministry, you know, Jesus spent a lot of time praying. He spent a lot of time praying. And I I think it's funny, like when people come up and ask me about praying and prayer and like, what's the importance of it and all that stuff. And I'm like, well, if the son of God was praying, like he should have been the one that had complete access to his dad. And if praying was a big deal to Jesus, like, man, it should be even more so important to us that we spend time communicating with him. You know, maybe this is a little corny, but maybe they knew Barnabas and Saul before they took on this ministry role, maybe they knew with great power was going to come great responsibility and they wanted to be prepared. Now, but here, here's one of the temptations what, what I'm about to talk about in just a few short moments, it's going to be very easy for you guys to just absorb this, leave, and, and do nothing with it, okay? There's another warning shot. I totally get it. I totally understand. But, but here's, here's the deal, guys. God doesn't want any backseat drivers. The church is in the shape that it's in today in our country and in our world is because we have a lot of Christian backseat drivers that like to sit in the back and just like to tell God what to do. But God is going to hand you some keys. He's going to say, hey, you're driving, but I'm your, I'm your GPS. God doesn't want any more backseat drivers. God is is wanting to put you behind the wheel. He's going to hand you some keys, but he's going to say, hey, I'm your your guidance system. Let me, if you would trust me, I'm going to get you where you need to go. I promise you, if you just just give me time, if you give me space to work, I'm going to get you there, right? God doesn't want you to just try to earn a, I came to church participation trophy. Okay, moving on. That's my soapbox. Okay. Okay. They were breaking new ground, right? So this was literally the first concentrated effort and organized effort to win people to Jesus. It was an incredibly big deal. So here's where it's going to get hard. We serve a God, the God that we just sang about, the, the God that we come each and every week and we learn about. The, the same God that we get in small groups and we learn about and we dive into, this God, the God that we serve, he is in the business of sending. He is in the business of sending. It's who he is. And I apologize, but if you call Crossbridge home, you are officially in the family business. <laughs> God is wanting to send you. Our desire, my biggest desire, is to lead you into a growing relationship with Jesus. So then in return, you will lead others into a growing relationship with Jesus. But Pastor Harold, you're the, you're the pastor guy. Essentially, this is, I thought this is what we pay you for. What are we, what are we, what, what, what are you doing then? Here's what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do my part, but could you imagine if we got all, all of us firing on, on, on all the same cylinders, what we can do for the Illinois Valley, what we can do for the kingdom with God helping us? The power that you possess is God living inside you. And our God is calling you to be a part of our mission, to go and to love unconditionally and to choose community. 
In Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, it says this. It says, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. If you've been here over the course of this series, there is a similar tune that I'm trying to convey to you that in our weaknesses, God is perfected. In your struggles, it gives God room to work. It is a space for God to show up and to thrive. Through God working in us, we can do immeasurably more. Because here's the deal, because when we are in relationship with him, you are feeling your purpose. When we are in relationship with him, you are feeling your purpose. Now, please don't go home and read Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, because here's the deal. It's probably not going to help you dunk a basketball, okay? If if some of you, if, if that is your life goal, you know, Probably not going to happen, right? Probably not going to be able to go home and dunk a basketball. But what this will give you the power to do is to maybe have a long overdue conversation with a spouse, to have a long overdue conversation with a coworker that you got into it a couple weeks ago. Maybe, maybe it's a conversation with your kids or your neighbor or whatever the case may be. Maybe you just need to create a space to listen to be a sounding board. So let's get back to the story. In verse one, back in Acts, it says, uh, now in the church at Antioch, there were some prophets, Barnabas and and Simeon and all those guys. And and while they were worshiping with the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, now set apart from me Barnabas and Saul for the work for which I have called them. So we started in verse three, not knowing God was, or, or now that we know that God is in the business of sending, let's take a look at what is happening prior to the sending moment. So in verse two is that we see these guys, Barnabas and Saul, they are, they're, they're worshiping in some form. Probably, probably could have been a little bit similar to what we were just doing a few short moments ago. They are simply just basting in the presence of God, just soaking it all in. The the praise and the glory and the honor and the awesomeness of who God is, they're just absorbing it in every pore of their body. In verse two, it says, now set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work for which I have called you. It's interesting that the Holy Spirit doesn't give any chance for them to distinguish the time on when they needed to go. The time is now. The Holy Spirit is saying, it's saying, now set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, go and do the work. You know, back in Romans 12, 1, it says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, again, if you guys remember correctly, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now set apart for me and go. Go and offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. What a, what a challenge. What, a, what, 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 a, what an incredibly high bar to try to live into. But, but, guys, but guys, here's the deal. It's just, it's, it's a mindset shift. Because your purpose, guys, if you came here today and you do not know what your purpose is, your purpose is to have relationship with God. And the power with that, in return, it's to point people to him. With great power that we receive from our relationship with God comes a great responsibility of us not just keeping it to ourselves. But God is asking each and every one of us to go to where we live, work, and play and to share. To share what he's doing in our life. Maybe it's just to listen. Here's the deal. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. Spirit-led works is always deeply rooted in worship. 
So we have Saul, who's essentially going to be Paul pretty soon. He, he is the pillar of the Christian movement. And he knew that what they were about to do, what they were about to go and try to accomplish, they had to be 100% in clear communication with God. So in scripture, how did they do that? They were worshiping. They were just basting in his presence, just wanting to soak up everything that God had to send to them. They were just wanting to take it all in. They were praying. They were fasting. And then they essentially, they went. So how can we get there? How can we truly get to a place to where we can live into the unlikely of our purpose? Because I'm going to tell you right now, like your purpose may not be what you're doing for a living. That's your job. And that's what you got to do to pay the bills and to keep your kids fed. I totally get that. I totally understand that. But your purpose is to be in relationship with the heavenly father. And the responsibility is to take the power that he's given you and to go and love other people. It's that. So how can we do that? If you're taking notes, I brought some action steps today for you to write down. Number one is this. There's just five steps. Number one is worship. Come and gather. If, 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 if you truly want to receive the power, if you truly want to grow in this thing, if you want to get this thing going in your life, guys, you, you've got to commit to being here. You've got to commit to coming and gathering and being in his presence and, and being active with your heart and your mind with other fellow believers. You have to participate. Number two is pray. We, we, we have to be in communication with Jesus. You will never learn the stillness of his voice if you do not try to communicate with him. You're never gonna feel those promptings if you don't communicate with him. Number three, maybe some of you can apply the, the, the practice of fasting in your life. What are some things that you could potentially cut away in your life to make more room for Jesus? Number four is listening. What can you observe around you? What are some areas that, that, that God may be asking you to step into? He's speaking to you and, and, and you're trying to learn and grow into what it means to, to hear from him. And when that clarity comes, you know, you know there's a reason. There, I think there's truly a reason why God gave us two ears and one mouth. We, we have to listen more. And that's coming from somebody that talks for a living. That's what I want to do. I want to listen some more. You know, some of the most valuable ministry that I've ever done in my life has been simply from listening. It, it hasn't been from anything profound that I've ever said. It, is, it has simply been from sitting in a chair across from a buddy and just listening. That, that has been some of the most miraculous things that God has done in somebody's life uh, is me just being there and listening. So how can we listen? Number five. Lean into the unlikely. Throughout this season, even though we're closing this series down, I want you to lean into what God is calling each and every one of you into. To do this amazing work. To do this amazing work for the kingdom in the Illinois Valley. So lean into the unlikely. Will you simply just trust him? Will you lean into your purpose? Will you lean into your relationship with him? And I promise you, I promise you, if, if you can do that, if, if you can do those things, if you can lean into him, you're gonna be great business partners. God is so excited to have you to be a part of the family business. And that is winning people for him. You know, in, in just a moment, um, we're, we're going to sing a song and we're going to sing a, it, it's a sending song. And so today, no matter where you find yourself, God wants you to be on purpose. And that is simply just relationship with him. And the power that comes with that, he is going to use that in you in a mighty and profound way if you just give him a chance. Because I look out into this room 
And I see God wanting to use each and every one of you. So my email is gonna be up on the screen. I wanna hear about your unlikely purpose. I wanna pray with you. I wanna join you. I wanna journey with you as God is calling each and every one of us into this because I'm right in the middle of it with you. I don't have all this figured out. There's some days that my head is spinning. I totally understand it. But God is with us. He's going to help us. I believe that that I am. If you're able, would you get on your feet as we worship?